We're good. Welcome in, everyone, to this special edition of the Flow Track Podcast. Gordon and I are in the studio for the first time since the Flow Track Create podcast was like created or relaunched or whatever we want to call it. We are in an actual studio. Yeah, look at this. There's lights. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's cameras. Yep. There's some action. We were we were in a studio in the first original podcast. Yeah. But it was a little. It was just like a sound room. Right. Oh, you're talking about in the whisper room. Yeah, the f- episode one of Flowcheck Podcast, which we did like two weeks before the pandemic started. Recorded on our iPhones. Yes. If I'm no, right. it was like a, like a handy cam. Gotcha. gotcha. It wasn't, wasn't live. live. We, recorded. we didn't have the audio. Yeah. And then we put it up, and uh, we did not think it would be 500 plus episodes later that we finally make it to the studio. And here we are. We're here. Yeah. What do you think of the studio? I like it. Uh, we got our email address right there. Yeah. I want to see email. if you're watching. If you're not watching, this experience is probably going to be identical to how it was before and you're like why are these guys talking about it uh same sponsor as before let's let's talk about the sponsor yeah before we talk about sponsor i gotta figure out how to do this earpiece ear what's your strategy because right now it's kind of do you have it clipped on the back no you have it clipped uh yeah i have a clip here on the back okay i need to worry how, how to do I the can clipping do it. um all right you start the you start yeah, the start, ad yeah and Gooder. i'm gonna do the clipping Gooder. we're sponsored by uh we're sponsored by gutter again Purveyors of sunglasses made for anyone who enjoys putting your body through hell and back. All different types of sunglasses, Gordon. Sprints, 5K, marathons, ultras, whatever you're running, they got a pair of sunglasses that's going to fit. All for $25 or $35. The website is gooder.com, G-O-O-D-R.com. $25 active sunglasses for anyone. They're fun. They're fashionable. They're functional, as Gordon is going to demonstrate right now. No slip, no bounce, all polarized and all fun. Check out this bag. You know what the problem with sunglasses? Mm. Sometimes they're expensive. They can be ugly. They can be over-engineered, but not these gooder ones. Check them out. Boom. Gooder solution. Affordable. Stylish. All performance. Free U.S. standard shipping if you purchase over $50 worth of sunglasses. 30-day free returns. One-year warranty. 100% carbon neutral. 1% for the planet. Just go find your pair. Gooder.com. That's G O O D. R no e dot com. That's right. What do you think of the sunglasses? Should I do the whole podcast? I mean, we're sunglasses? marketing them as, as for running, but I think for podcasting, they're good too. They're good podcasting. I don't want you to. I want to be able to see your eyes during Why? the show, though. But they are. They. I will admit, they do look sharp on you. I kind of. And like they look like they're going to stay on. They're not one of those that are going to fall right off. No, I like can shake my head, look. head. Yeah. If I had like a really bad take and you shake your head violently, like it was the worst take you had ever heard, no. would those glasses fall off? No slip, bro. Yeah. Pretend I just said something. That you vehemently like, I, like I, pretend I, pretend I, said, I said. Should I try Ch- to get them to fall off my head? Cesarek should not have won the Bowerman. They were right. They stayed on. This is good. I oh. think I just tweaked my back doing that. I have a bad back today, so I probably shouldn't have done. I'm trying to think of something else that would bother you. Yeah, there's a lot of things that bother me. There right. should not be four majors in track and field. Okay, there should only stop. be one. All right, I'm taking, to... we're taking glasses off because right, you're trying to bother me with the bad takes. I'm trying so. to see if you can shake your head. And the I couldn't. I tried off. it. I hurt my. I just. That's how good the glasses I are. I hurt though. my shoulder with that little tick. <laughs> it's not good. All right. Gooder.com. Welcome to the studio. Yeah. It's a pretty good studio. And Gooder.com, check out the glasses. Um, all right. So we're talking London Marathon. We're doing the men's preview today. We're also going to talk about cross country because Gordon's on the show still. New studio. But same co-host. Just kidding. <laughs> we want to talk about cross country. But first, London Marathon. Uh, news broke. What? Right before we started. I didn't even see it. Yeah. Mo Farah's out. Now, I know a lot of people were not picking Mo Farah to win because they've been paying attention to his results over the last couple of years. Hasn't been what we're used to with Mo Farah ending, you know, entering the ending portion of his career. But he officially pulled out with an injury, so we will not get to see Farah in London. Even though he was going to be an underdog, he was going to receive a bunch of attention because of where the race is held. And because he's a 10-time global gold medalist who's won a major marathon before. And everybody... Wants to believe, wants to think, hey, this is going to be the time that he can perhaps recapture that. Or maybe he can have one last big run in, in London, but was not to be. He's hurt, he's out, and will not start. All right. Do you think, like, he's ever going to give us one last, you know, he always says one more mile, like one, like. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. If, this might be the end. I, I mean, they did say that he was planning on coming back in 2023 London. 
But I feel like you easily can say that now. And then, you know, come March of 2023, you're like, hey, I never mind. I changed my mind. I think it, it just, I'm not confident. My confidence meter on Mo Farah ever running just a legitimate elite tier race at the marathon is gone. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I just don't think it's happening. Well, even if he started and ran, you throw up the start list here, Cole. Like, look at all the people who have run. So there's what a group of like eight or so guys who had run under 205. Now, not all of them are going to pan out, but Farrell was not going to be expected to win this race. I mean, there no. would have been some people who were casual marathon fans who turned in and said, I, I recognize him. He should be the best one out there. But look at what happened last year. Remember, he tried to run, qualify for, um, or field the Olympic year, excuse me, try to qualify, um, couldn't make it, right? Had those rough 10,000 meter races. Ran a road race, got you know, got beat by a club runner, which everybody made a big deal of at the time, right? That, yeah. Like, it's it's very clear the direction his career is going. However, you want to think like Meb, maybe, right? Because we pay attention to Meb's career yeah. of just the the idea of hey, they can bring it together for one last special day. The difference is Meb just had a much longer marathon career, very consistent performer. Farah, the marathon was the postscript to his career, and man, you just it changed so quickly for him. When you go from 2019, ran really well. You thought he even teased about running in the Doha 10K at the World Championships. And then pretty much after that point, he hasn't had like a big time moment after that. Yeah. Well, I just looked it up. Mo Farah is 39. Yeah. And he's going to turn 40 before the 2023 London Marathon. So, yeah. I mean, maybe he's just doing it because he knows he's a name brand and that he can continue his career on his celebrity stardom that like he'll still get an appearance fee people are still want to see what he does even though he's never going to be the way he was during his like 10 year run he can still monetize his value as yeah. a 40 year old you know oh i don't i think that's what he's doing probably for sure the same way bekele who's still in this race yeah. as of this recording yeah. you don't blame him for doing that too but we need to not think of them as athletes who are competing in their prime or even close to their prime at this point, there are different phases of their career. Not everybody's Kipchoge. Not everybody's going to be late 30s and still contending for a major marathon. Mo's only two years older than Kipchoge. Yeah. That's wild. And right. Kipchoge just broke the world record. How do you think that makes Mo feel? I think it makes Bekele had a marathon time only two seconds slower than Kipchoge until Sunday morning. And then yeah. Kipchoge is like, mm, we're going to move that back. We're move that. Yeah. Now you're 32 seconds behind me, which is still good. You're still, you're still in a good range. But I think that was kind of a feather in the cap for Bekele. <laughs> like, like, I'd take it. I'm only two seconds behind Kip Chobe yeah. or something. That's a win. But, yeah, these guys were never – they're not They're not the favorites. They weren't going to be the favorites. They get talked about because they're big names and they deserve to be. They're two of the greatest, you know, five and 10,000-meter runners of all time. Bekele still is number two all time in the marathon. But that's not where they're at in their career. Like, if I – looking at this field, do you think Bekele gets top five? No. I think Capelli, Pakele, what did I call him? Pakele? You combined a couple of different yeah. guys right there. Uh, I, I think he DNFs. I think he's a DNS or DNF. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a D somewhere in right. his result time, whether it's a DNS or DNF. Yeah. So I think I'm looking at this men's field overall, run through a couple of names. Bashir Abdi, bronze at the World Championships this past summer, and then also bronze at the Olympics. You have Sisse Lema, who's the reigning champion in this event. Um, but Gese obviously is running really fast. Um, let's see. Have we updated? Ooh, do we have a gentleman who got second? Oh, Amos Kipruchu. I like him, actually. Second to Kipchoge in Tokyo as a, as, as a potential contender as well, too. But I don't think there's one clear. Anytime you're not have race on Kipchoge, you're going to have a pretty wide open race here yeah. in this in this era. But. I think the win would come from that that group. Uh, Leo Gerber Salasi is in there as well, but I think it's pretty open. Do you have a lean? Do you have a pick? Uh, I'll say Lima, defending champion. Yeah, I just I don't know. I don't. No one has like a has put together consistent times where I'm thinking like you're. Like the you know the best non Kipchoge runner right now. It's yeah. kind of like Kipchoge and everyone, and 
everyone has a reason why they can win and everyone has a reason why they are gonna you know falter i don't think there's any it's kind of i mean uh oh what are you, the way you paused there made you think you were gonna say something that i was gonna say something okay go ahead something that you're gonna if you regret. take kipchoge out of the ma men's marathon yeah the men's marathon is kind of like the men's 800 oh you took that to another level i agree though right yeah it's just like all right you don't know what you're gonna get it could be anybody's day i mean that's typical of marathons because yeah that's a fact it's more understandable in the marathon yes, than it would be in the 800 it's, yeah. it's more than how many laps is a marathon math 20 uh, four, 26 times four it's like over 100 104 laps. yeah 104 laps 105 105 laps two, whereas two, 800 two. is only two yeah. uh but <laughs> what i'm trying to say is because of anything can happen right right you can look at all these people and they all have a reason we could do it we could do a contest we could say pick your top three finish yeah, yeah. and maybe no one gets it right well and yeah and there's been guys who come up and they win one or two in a row and they're like mm -hmm. ah that's the guy that's and the person who's gonna Contend with Kipchoge, and then absolutely right. Yeah, then they're yeah. then they're gone because that's how it normally works in the marathon. The marathon is not supposed to be something that someone can dominate for like yes. four or five years, let alone what Kipchoge is doing for ten. Um, Who do you like? So I like. I'm going with defending champ. Yes, Lemma's good. I like Kiprutu. Just I mean, I, he was second to Kipchoge, and in, in he's run something good this year, right? And then you go and you look through this list. And I thought it was a fun exercise to kind of like when was our last good marathon? So. Barrow when he was still in it, like his last really good one, 2018. Michele's, 2019. Lemma's it was last year, fall, when London Marathon was. Legese, you got to go back to 2020. But Kiprutu and Abdi, like it's this year. It's this year that they had their best marathon. But that doesn't always tell you everything like that, everything that you need to know. But because, as you mentioned, it's so hard to forecast it, like that's enough for me to like say, all right, I'll go Kiprutu. But yeah, Lemma. I think it's getting it's coming from that five, that group of five or six. Like, like, imagining a world without Bekele in the men's marathon is weird. Like you kind of put me in a different headspace when you said that. Without Bekele, or oh, I mean, without Kachoga. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, me it's going to be like the men's eight hundred. Like I don't want to live in that world. It's going to be bad. I, I don't want to live. We're gonna there. The American fans are going to be cheering for two oh nine marathons. <laughs> this is going to be not fun. It's going to be like a dystopian world. It's going to be like, oh my goodness. World record most two hundred nine U.S. men in a race, and they're all running two hundred nine fifty four. What if, what if Bekele, um, what if Kipchoge? Excuse me. Yeah, you keep going. mixing me up. Yeah. But what if Kipchoge is like, yeah, I'm sticking on the track. He never moved to the marathon. Ooh. And he just just like banged his head against the wall for years and years and years. Running like thirteen oh ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is the seventh consecutive global championship where Ilya Kipchoge has finished in the top 10 in the 5,000. We're like, man, this guy's longevity is incredible. He could have been retired. I mean, that, if just he, a, I'm thinking about the impact it would have on marathon running. Like, yeah. people, the interest in these marathons would just be so not good. Yeah. Like, ooh, Kipchoge single handedly has raised the value of marathon watching tenfold. Like, it's kind of weird to think about a time yeah. pre Kipchoge. I mean, when would you say his run officially, like, what was the year? 13, right? 13? Yeah. So we're, at, we're on, like, coming up on 10 years. Yeah. But what was it like watching marathons from 2000 to 2013? It was still good. You had the run of world records, you had the Cometos and the Macaws, yeah. and then Jeffrey Mutai had a couple yeah. years there. That was pretty awesome. But it wasn't, there wasn't, like, that aura. It was kind of just... Oh, 100%. But here's the question, though. Because when... So when he does... Before he does Breaking 2, right? He had... He won his first one, and then he lost to Wilson Kipsang in 13. Then in 14, he wins Rotterdam. He wins Chicago. I remember I was in Chicago for that one. But Caleb was in the race. But Caleb was supposed to win that. And then it was kind of this interesting... Oh, Kipchoge, the guy who won that 5,000-meter goal like back in the day. Like, that's cool. That's a, yeah. you, got a, you got a marathon win. But the story was really... Man, but Caleb cannot figure out the marathon. Then you go to next year. 2015, wins London, wins Berlin, both in 204s. Where it shifted was 2016, right? London wins again, and then he gets, and then he wins in Rio, which jumps us into breaking two. But remember, before breaking two, it wasn't just him. There was a group of a couple of the guys, right, who were going to run, and it was supposed to be this battle of who's going to break two. 
And now in retrospect, it seems ridiculous that there was ever a question yeah. of who would be the guy. But my question is, do they even have that if Kipchoge is not in the marathon and he's not running, you know, two oh fours and no. dominating these races? No. Even though they had two other guys in it, you don't think they they even do the experiment without him, right? No, they don't. I just think Kipchoge's so good, he literally has turned a London Marathon men's preview podcast about him. Himself. That's pretty, good. That's pretty good. That's right. how good he is. He's 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 messing with us in our preview. But yeah. So you're going with who so I'm going with uh Lima, you're going with I'm going with Kibrutu. Kibrutu. Yeah. Then, Chat. Some people are going with Bekele. Mm. Uh, Beef Boy says Bekele will run 207. I mean, that's he's not, not going to run 207. That's not a, a bad. Deal. That's not a bad pick, though. I mean, I don't think Bekele would finish with 207. He has been. He remember he did New York and Berlin back. Yeah, maybe he's a change, man. Yeah, that's true. He ran 206 in Berlin last year. Donald so. Pump says Bekele wins in 202.11. That is bold. That's, that's bold. That's more surprising than a 207. But yeah, New York last year he got sixth, two twelve, and then what was Ber Berlin last year? I thought he ran. Didn't he? He ran two back to back last year. Why am I not seeing this? Am I not? You not remembering this? Am I the only person who remembers this? But remember, and we're like, man, he's not going to run either of them, and then ran both of them, and I was wrong. Let me look this up. By the way, a good part of being in the studio, you looking up the comments too, not just me. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. This is new. It's yeah, new, new me. People are excited because you're reading their name. Um, uh, lifelong dream fulfilled. Hold on. I, this is bothering me now. I don't know why this... Yeah, Berlin, he got third in 206. And then in November, he ran New York and got uh, sixth in 212. So neither of those were good. Neither of those were good. Those were all trending, obviously, in the opposite direction. But he's 40. He's actually 40. Michaela is already 40. You talked about Farrah getting to 40. He's already 40. So anything he does at this point is a bonus. Um... By the way, I have no idea what's... I don't know if people can hear that. Are they just doing like... No, they can't hear that. plumbing going on They're plumbing. Yeah. Just incredible. No, first day. they read... Oh, they can hear some of it? Cold saying they can hear it, so... Uh, it's bleeding through just a, just a tad. Yeah, it's sorry. Not that bad. They're, I, yeah. We There's, don't decide. Someone is, someone is retrofitting some This is our old office. People don't know. This is our old office. Mm -hmm. We got the key. We, we... Don't tell anybody. This is our old office. We have a new office that's downtown. Yeah. Which you never go to. Nope. Why don't you go to the new? Because I'm all like locked in on podcast. I can't get too far away from my microphone and my equipment. So I go to that office occasionally. I have I have a little nook. I have a little nook. Yeah, it's you should come sit next to me in the office. Why don't you come to the office? This is good. This is a good. This is a proper amount of time sitting next to you, and I'm glad we're doing this in the studio. All in the game says this is the first time in the studio, and is it here to stay? Well, yeah, yes and no. So yes, but n you're not going to do it here on Friday, are you? Oh, because you're going to be gone? I'm going to be gone. And I'm gone on Monday. It's going to be it's going to be where we want to be, but then if there's extenuating circumstances, we'll s switch back to Yes. It. It's here. Remote. But this yeah. is our new place. It's just if we're traveling. Unless Colt doesn't like it. We do whatever Colt, Colt wants. tells Colt's us. Colt's not here. Colt is remote producing us. Yeah, but he's here. He's always here. Yeah. In spirit. I, I'm there with you guys. Yeah. We should. I wish we could give a way to show like people what the studio looks like without moving the cameras. I don't even need to see it. It's just cameras and lights and stuff. I think they want to see what's going on with these pipes. Because <laughs> it's just incredible what's going on. All right, back to London. Yeah, back to London. All right. Um, we'll do women's preview on Friday. Yes. I'll do the women's preview on Friday. I think we've just gone on Monday. No, I'm going Friday and Monday. Wow. Okay. I'll be straight to camera. <laughs> Friday, women's preview. Everybody show up 1230 Central. I'm going to need friends. Yes. I'm going to need friends, guys. I'll tune in. I'll Will be you? on a plane though. Okay, so I'll just—that's I'll, a start. I'll chat from the Wi-Fi on the on the airline. Okay, it'll be good. All right. So Mo Farah's out. Kaylee's still in. You're picking Sese Lemma. I'm picking Kabruchu. But watch out for that other group there. Pick Sese, uh, Gibber Salase, et cetera, et cetera. Do I talk about cross country now? Since we're in person. Is that do what, I? Is that what is next? Well, okay, so. Is, what's what's drink some water while you do that. <laughs> all right. So this past weekend, obviously, we were all thinking about Berlin Marathon, which was fun. Two AM podcast. First of all, thanks for people who watched that podcast. It gave us it a purpose to, to wake up that early. Yeah, uh, so I appreciate everyone who joined in. Um, but anyway, there was also cross country races going down for people who follow cross country, and uh, the Cowboy Jamboree happened, and we saw a few upsets. I mean, major upsets, mainly on the men's side. BYU men won. NAU got second. 
right? Wait. Do oh, I, no. No, no, I don't know. BYU won. Stanford got second. NAU got third. And Oklahoma State got fourth. So it was a very, I mean, I had NAU won, Stanford two, Oklahoma State three, BYU four. And then it was BYU, Stanford, NAU, Oklahoma State. So it was wild finish. Um, Alex Mayer of Oklahoma State won the race. Pretty impressive. Oklahoma State went 1-3. Stanford went 2-4. BYU went 7-10-11. NAU went 5-9. So there's a lot of stuff, right? But here's the thing. I looked at these results, and I did did the numbers. I saw these athletes and who they didn't run. I mean, the teams teams and and who they didn't run. I text some coaches, ask about health of certain athletes. And so I updated the rankings. And BYU is going to stay at four in my rank. Disgrace. Even though they won the Cowboy Jamboree Disgrace. by 26 points, BYU is staying number four in my rankings. Mm. Stanford is going to be three. NAU is two. And Oklahoma State, who finished fourth in this race, is my new number one. Kevin, what are your thoughts I, on uh, my new top four? Well, wow. Oklahoma State being one after finishing fourth in this race. And BYU staying fourth after winning this race. I, I like people who win, Gordon. So I'd have those ones in a different Would order. you rather win or be right? In terms of picking or in terms of competing? In, in life. Winning. I'd rather be right. Oh, well, that's the difference between me. That's why I'm on this side of the desk and you're on that side of the desk. Yes. Um, and they're really close. I think that's what I learned from all this. And NAU, I was worried about their depth. Still worried about their depth, but that's an issue for all these top four teams. I see it as a four team race, and I think there's not much of a difference right now between any one of these four. I get why you went with Oklahoma State, even though they didn't get fourth, they held people out, which if you put them anywhere near where we think they're capable of, they would they would give them an edge, but it's not a big enough edge to where I would feel confident about Oklahoma State. I think just to me underscores NAU is gonna need every person they have, every potential all American type athlete that they have. To get in there, Stanford, we know the top three is good. Can they get the four or five? BYU, they got a low stick and clinger and, and potentially Allen, but like what's going to, they've always had pretty solid depth. It, you know, this is not going to be a winning score of 65 points, 75 points. This one's going to be north of 100, I think. I don't know. I still think it's going to be under 100. I, I, like, well, your projections don't say that. No, my projections don't say that, but projections change over okay. time. Here's the thing. BYU, would you rather be projecting right or would you be rather be projecting to win? BYU didn't uh, hold out anyone from their projected top five. Stanford held out. Uh, yeah, but people improved. Ty Robinson, who's probably one of their top two or top three guys. NAU held out three of their top five. And Oklahoma State held out three of their top five. All right. But I mean, at a certain point, you got to run, and that's great. And you don't get any bonus points for not running. Well, they'll run at Nutty Cone. And yeah, I still think it's going to be close. I think these four teams are close. You don't think them they're close? They're close, yeah. I just think that Okay, so right now I'm ranking Oklahoma State it's one. one here. Let me let me let me back up. Should I tell you who I'm gonna pick to win? No no let me let me Should just, I tell you the official Gordon Mack prediction? Let me explain something to you. All right, explain it. There's two different types of people that are held out. One, let's just use any use an example example. There's holding out Matt Baxter from Nutty Cone. The year after he was like third or second or whatever in NCAAs yeah. and all of America. Like, you know what you're going to get from Matt Baxter. He's going to be fine. Yeah. Similarly, like you say, Rodriguez. Like you can kind of have a good idea of what he's going to do. Yeah. It's a whole other thing when you're holding out somebody who's completely unproven at this level. Whether so you're implying Colin Solomon. Or anybody else who is, is thought of highly, mostly because you decided they were ranked highly. And we haven't seen any results from them at the collegiate level. So we got to be careful that our projections don't become a self-fulfilling prophecy, which I think we have the tendency to do sometimes. So there's two different – like if you held – if NAU held out Nico Young, totally different situation because we know what we're going to get from Nico Young, assuming good health, than holding out someone who's not proven yet at this level. Well, NAU held out their number three, number four, number five runner. Yeah, I'm, I, that's all I'm saying. Everybody held well, – all you're doing is just men- mentioning a million people who got – Held out, which I get, but I'm saying there's two different. They didn't hold out their number six, seven, eight runner. They held out the three, four, five. Very different. 
It doesn't so you matter. See where their number it doesn't matter what. No. So when you Ryan know, Raff finished nineteenth in this race, what, how do you, you know? You can s- add three more NAU guys who would finish in the top twenty. How do you know race. Solomon is there? Three, four, or five? Sources. Okay. Well, all right. I wonder who that is. But I'm saying <laughs> that's all projection at this point. That's all projection. Whereas I think it's a little different than someone who was last year the team's number one guy and they've done it year after year at the college level. You have a much better idea of like, okay, they're going to be like Kyle Robinson. It makes sense. You know, kind of know where he is relative to Hicks and Sprout. Why don't we know where Colin Solomon is? Because he hasn't run a 10K uh, in, in a cross country, on a cross-country course. Did we know that Nico Young hadn't run a 10K? And, and I would have argued it? the same thing about Nico Young early season. But, then you but now wrong. he's proven. Yeah, but, now he's, but I can point to other people, other times when guys who you thought were going to deliver or women who thought were going to deliver didn't. And we did it just based on projection. Again, odds are if you're – that fast, you're going to continue to be yeah. that fast. But I'm saying that's just different than someone who's a, okay, we can just move their points and slot them in right here, and it's a math equation. But I think you just look at history. You should look at history and seeing there there are typically one to two freshmen who do well every year, true freshmen. You see like someone like Grant Fisher well, ran Nico well. Didn't you run see someone fall. like Ben Sorrell ran well. You see someone like wow. Pat Tiernan ran well. You see someone that Drew Bosley ran well. He was top 25 his true freshman year. We always – Nico Young. There's always good true freshmen. Now, there are good true freshmen who don't run well, like a Cole Hawker. His first cross-country 10K, not that good. Yeah, there's a lot of people. That's, but, but I am going to go more with it's more likely to happen under Mike Smith than it's least likely to happen under Mike Smith. Like, I feel like he has a good record of running true freshmen and succeeding. Like, Luce Corral was a true freshman, and he ran well. All I'm saying is not just a NAU thing. I'm talking about this for every team. Doesn't matter if we're talking about men's or women's. It's just like there's, there's two types of people who like if not Natalie Cook obviously crush it on the women's side of things, but if she didn't run and then we're like okay where is she going to be at nationals? I'd be just a little more cautious about projecting where she's going to be. Now we've seen it. We know how good yeah. she is. Different story, but it's just, just it's a whole different challenge at this level. All right, so I ranked it Oklahoma State, NAU, Stanford, BYU. What would you rank it? You're not going to put BYU 1. Stanford? Okay, so you're going to put why, – why don't you put BYU 1? Because they beat Stanford. They're all, they're all close. No, but no, you can't – you get mad at me when I yeah. don't go off of the results, but you know you don't think BYU is the favorite. No, I'll go BYU 1. Do you believe that though? Yeah. Do you truly believe BYU is going to win? I think sometimes we should rank people based on what they've done, not what we think they're going to be. We've ta- had this argument before. One is a projection, the other is a ranking. And then if you win, it should mean something. But if you win against people's B squads, does that mean something? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, they should run their A squads. No. They, they don't get to be called number one teams. Why? Because they didn't run. And sports is about showing up. They didn't run. BYU, number one in my rankings. I'm going to go actually see if I can. Okay. Do, are, do you think BYU will win the national championship? Not only their favorite to win the national championship. So why are you ranking them number one? In the same way where Georgia is number one in college football right now. And do I think Alabama. Why are we talking about football? This is a cross country podcast. Because one, we've done this before. It's a, not a cross country podcast for the record, guys. Those of you not tuning it's in. It's a cross country segment of a track and field podcast. Yeah. Because there's what's. I've explained to you before. I might have to do it again. There's what's happening right now. And there's what we believe is going to happen in the future. I think when we get to November, I don't think BYU will be number one. But right now, I think they've done enough to earn it. And I think it should matter if you're running your, your top people or not. I think it should. So if BYU doesn't lose, they're probably going to their regional because whatever. No one tries a regional. What if they, they don't run at Nutty Comb or they do pre-Nats? So you're gonna, there's going to be no reason to, to downgrade BYU if this is the only main yeah, this is the Yeah, and this is the foibles of ranking cross-country teams because there's no real cross-country season. So we're all just – again, one is a projection, one is a ranking. You're, you're doing weird. projections. I just think it's, it's weird that you're ranking your number one ranked team you don't think is going to win. That doesn't make okay, any sense to me. Because one is a ranking and the other is a projection. Do you understand the difference between the two? I think they're the same. No, Colt, help me out here. I think your rankings is if the Have season ended now, four, players who would win a race. I think we're in reruns, boys, but okay. yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. This yeah, we'll turn this. All right. So the problem is the season I is – I think there's is, a difference. The, the, the season is two meets long, whereas in other sports, the season is 10, 15 times of seeing it. So What does the chat think? Uh, Judson says, hey, Colt, you might have to separate these guys. Well, Colt's not physically here. Like I said, we're, he's remote. We're here in Colt, but he's not here. So he'll have to virtually uh, separate drive us. Drive down. All right, let's talk – 
let's talk a little bit about the women's side of things. Let's talk about so, what's Kansas State ranked in in college football now. You're a Kansas State guy. Oh really? No, we're, we're, we're ranked after Oklahoma. You beat no, Oklahoma, no. right? No, I want to want to make a point here. No, let's we, see. We lost already. They're, they're not like ranked. A terrible school. They're not ranked. Oh, they didn't. Okay. No, because they lost to Tulane. Okay. Yeah, Let's talk about the women's cross. Line. You're trying to change the subject. We're, we're, we're talking about women. No, I'm just looking at all these teams who everybody has to pick Georgia to win. And if they don't pick Georgia to win, they're stupid. I think everyone who chose Georgia number one in their ranking thinks they're going to win the college no, football championship. No, no. People are picking Alabama. That's exactly my point. Beef Boy agrees with me. Let's move on then. Okay. I just wanted to wait for uh, one agreement. That's Thank fine. You. Oklahoma State, they go 1-2. Natalie yeah. Cook wins. True freshman. Taylor Rowe gets second. Um, I guess it's sp- specifically talking about Cook. And yeah. Cook, do you think Cook could yeah. win? I mean, she's awfully good. And then you see, you see what she does here, and it almost looks like what we saw in high school from her, like that level of dominance. Who do you have up? I mean, Tui, I think, is going to be formidable. Mercy Chilanga is going to be formidable. So I, I would lean one of those two right now. But I think Cook is top five. Yeah, point. so right now my individual rankings, I have Chilang got one. I still have Taylor Rowe, too, even though she lost to her teammate Cook. Caitlin Tui three and then Cook four. I think those are fine. I would. I mean, I would have. I have Tui higher up. I think Tui's got a really good shot to win. So New you have Tui second. I probably put her mm. first. Man, Chelan got so consistent. I'm a. Yeah, I'd probably keep. I'd probably put Tui one. Tui one. Tui one. Chelan got two, and then I put the but two. But what has Tui done on the cross country course that justifies her being ranked one versus Mercy Chelan got? Well. It's not just about cross country. It's about what you didn't track last year. When I use that argument for my rankings, you're like, Gordon, what? No, it's about what you've done in cross country. You don't like it when I take into account track rankings. Yeah, it's just you're bringing up all this old stuff. Yeah, Gordon. okay. So one thing I think is interesting, though, if we show the, uh, the top six women that I have rankings, they're from three schools. Yeah. So it goes Alabama, Oklahoma State, NC State, Oklahoma State, Hold NC State, Hold on, you State, got that Alabama. mad at me and you have two and three? Yeah, two, three. So, what justifies her being as high as three? You must have taken into account no, track good. rankings. But I think it's kind of cool that we have like yeah. a pairs. You have the Chilanga, um, Mars pair. You have the Roe Cook pair and the Tui Camille pair. Who's your favorite pair? Like, who would you want to go to? Who would you want if you're coaching and you have to have a one-two <laughs> punch? Which one-two punch do you want? Do you want the Alabama's one-two punch, Oklahoma State's one-two punch, or NC State's one? I mean, I would. Well, I think it's a lot to uh, who has the best three, four, five punch, and there's one school that's above. Yeah, it. yeah, but I'm just talking about one, two punch. Um, We're not talking about three, four, five. I mean, I'd probably still go NC State. You rather than NC State? Yeah, right? probably. So I mean, NC State, no Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's kind of home field advantage too. So yeah, I, I like N- Oklahoma State. There is a factor; it's a freshman cook, so there's yeah. an experience. Yeah. Chilang got though; she is super experienced, and Ameris ran really well on this course. Ties, in- but yeah. In uh, twenty twenty, yeah, when they did it, when they did it in the in the spring, so they all have a reason to choose. You have Oklahoma State with home course advantage, Alabama. They both ran well on this course. Then NC State, you know, yeah, they're just we know what they're going to bring. So I think if I had to power rank my top two, I think I would rather have. I think I would take NC State. I think it would take Alabama, mm. NC State, Oklahoma State when it comes to one-two punches. Interesting. I think I put Oklahoma State second behind NC State, but I just I like the home. I, I know Tyson ran well there before, but track she wasn't a factor. This again, why are we bringing up track, bro? Because it's, it's the most country it's the, podcast. It's the most recent it's result. A country segment within a track and field. I'm podcast. not saying where they deserve to be ranked right the second. I'm saying right. she was 17th in the 5K. Um, I'm looking at last. Oh yeah, she didn't. Yeah, where did she? Uh, what about indoors? Indoors, just to the DMR. Cross was third though. You're right. You're right. I mean, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe Alabama should be higher. Yeah. So uh, looking at the team for women, um, NC State's gonna stay number one. They're gonna be running this weekend at Notre Dame against New Mexico, who falls to three, and also against Alabama, who's in the seventh spot. So we're gonna have a really good. Team battle between NC yeah. State, New Mexico, and Alabama, and Notre Dame. But my rankings now, NC State 1, Oklahoma State moving to 2, New Mexico dropping to 3, and then Northern Arizona. They were preseason ranked 11. They move all the way up to 4. Yeah. And I think that's a real 4. I don't think that's a projection 4. I think they are going to finish at worst 6th at National. 
What happened? How'd they do that? I don't know. They just, you know, a lot of their women who ran well, like, I haven't heard of. Like, they just, like, I don't know. There's something interesting about, like, the first real cross-country test that top teams have. And you're, like, you see, like, these new names emerge because they've had a whole summer of good training. Yeah. They weren't really factors the previous year because there were some graduating seniors. And then all of a sudden you see these names like, I never heard of you, but like you're finishing top 10 in a really deep field or top yeah. 20. And then that's what NAU was. They, all these people I did not think were potential All-American runners. Yeah. And then they run well at Cowboy Jamboree. And now you're like, oh, they all don't right. just have one good runner. They have like four. Yeah. yeah. And they don't need to hold it for very long because once we find out about them, that means the season's half over. Yeah. Because that's how cross country works. Uh, questions in the chat. Rufus asks, is Kaylee McCabe not running this year? Uh, I don't think so. I think she's running. Why would she not? You don't think she's running or don't think she's not running? I don't, Do you have a ranked? I have a ranked. Okay. So Gordon thinks she's running. I think she's running. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think she's... Let me let me, let me bring up uh, West Virginia schedule. I can't find it. I used to have it. Uh, Gordon has a lot of tabs open. I think phones. West Virginia... Let me just bring up their schedule. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they haven't run yet. Uh, they run live in Lou. Great segue. Live in Lou. Live in Lou. Mm-hmm. Live in Lou. It's not like live. live. Like oh, move live, to live in. Yeah. Like it's for the oh. tour, like visitors authority. They're like move here. Live in Lou. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Live in Lou cross country classic Is this weekend. And guess where you can watch it on Flow Track. Yes. Okay. Where you can watch Kayla McCabe. Kayla McCabe. If she runs. She, Which we think she's gonna. Run. We think she's gonna. Run. Yeah. The the time you should really wonder about people not. Competing is if they don't run like this weekend or next weekend. If you haven't seen them by then, then it's, well, by Nutty Co. Which is next weekend, two right? Two weekends from now, or two weekends from Saturday, or one weekend? I thought it was one weekend from no. Saturday. It's October fifteenth. Okay, this weekend's October first. You don't see them on October fifteenth. Yeah. Then call Gordon. Oh. Uh, if you got other comments in the chat, leave them now. We'll, we'll get to those. Your cross country questions or London Marathon predictions, projections, thoughts on the studio. Someone says you cats looking fly. You want to explain your clothes? Can we get into that? No, we don't need. We're not ready. No, we don't. No, we're not ready to explain. Is that a bonus pod thing? Maybe that's a bonus pod. Okay, guys, this is a great story about the clothes. (laughs) Not as good as the shoes. Eh, Might be better. It's better. Yeah, it's all leading towards a positive version of Gordon. So that's all that's matters. Yeah, that's good. Gordon wears collared shirts now, guys. This is incredible. Yeah, you wear buttoned-up shirts too. Yeah, we're taking Gordon to the next level. Yes, (laughs) Gordon point oh. Is that what we're saying now? That's what we're saying now. Uh, dunk update. I'm gonna do. I'm I'm playing pickup basketball tonight <laughs> okay. at six. You're gonna dunk in the game. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna attempt to do like. You're gonna hurt I'm yourself. Gonna, I'm gonna attempt to do a really strong layup. This is not good. I play at six thirty. It's a. I got invited. I'm, I don't like this. What do you mean you don't like this? You you're you're achieving for something higher. It's like if Kip Choge showed up to like a turkey trot and ran. It's all risk, no reward. No, you know, but like you know, I don't want you to get hurt. You're gonna have to a bunch of lateral movements. Look, I did play pickup with this particular person like before I started the like. He's the one who filmed my first dunk gotcha, attempt gotcha. in January. Wait, are you? And I haven't seen him since. So it's, I haven't seen him. So I'm a really good friend, clearly, because yeah, I haven't yeah. seen him in nine. You guys months. are tight. <laughs> We're really tight. Are all your relationships like this? Yeah. Uh, so I'm meeting up with him to play some pickup. Wait, he knows that I was trying to dunk so wood floor. Like, or indoor, outdoor, outdoor still. Oh, we got to get you on the. I know. The, I know the wood floor. I got time. I mean, I'm re- actually running out of time. I have three months now. I know. Right? I freaked out on that because my goal was to bench press, and yesterday I got pinned going for something big. Yo, so what's your max right now? You're trying to bench 200, right? 200 on December 31st. Um, I did four reps at 160, which was feeling good. Have you done a one rep at no, 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 anything? No, And then I tried to do four reps at 165, did two, and on the third one, you almost, you almost and then died. dumped the weight, made a huge noise, yeah. and my wife ran out. Are you okay? Are you okay? So... Could only get two at 165. I don't think that translates to 200. It's 35 more pounds, bro. It's not that much. It's not. But I'm going to keep going. If I got, if I get to 190 by New Year's Eve, I'll be like, man, that's cool. Like, I improved a lot. Because as you guys can tell, if you're watching, not a big bench guy my whole <laughs> life. But well, you, Are you going to stop if you don't make it to 200? I want to quit. No, you can't me, quit. But I think I want to – I like it. It's you fun to go. do. Get to 200. Then it's quit. fun to do new challenges, right? Get to 200, we, then quit, and then – Get weak again and then do it again and like. But then you realize you're just scratching the surface. 
it's basically like someone saying, I just want to break 10 in the mile, and then you quit. Like, no, 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 you can get even even yeah, faster. Yeah. But to me, in my head, it seems really good. All right, Tampa Eagle asks, are the Villanova women good? I can tell you. That's I, I think that's what Tampa Eagle asked. I got to look at my – so I got some rough – Look, you can see like the back end of my rankings. It's a lot of color it's coordination. A, it's a spreadsheet, guys. It's not that crazy. <laughs> it's a complicated. It's like, oh my gosh, the Villanova women. Cynics is Zuckerberg over here. They're not good. What are we projecting? It's not even making the meet. How many in the top two fifty five? Do we have? I don't even know. Well, I could do that. It's Control F. It's pretty easy. Oh, okay, I'll tell you. Give Tampa Eagle something. Here. I'll give him some. I'll give him some. First time, first person in the chat all the time. Oh, there we go. That's the men, though. Here you go, women. That's men still. Keep going. Colt's doing your job for you. Yeah. Oliver at 149. Is that it? Sadie Sigstead at 167. Maggie Smith at 179. Yeah. So three in the top 255. Yeah. So you don't have them getting out of the region. No. Good question, though. Got any... More questions about specific teams, leave them in the chat. I'm your guy. Gordon will answer them. Uh, someone else said New Mexico is the biggest underdog this year. I did uh, text that I dropped New Mexico from two to three, and Joe Franklin sent me an emoji of like shaking my head emoji. Mm. So he believes in his team. I hope so. That seems like it would be a prerequisite to coach. Okay, you know level. what I mean. He thinks his team is bad. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great? That'd be a good coaching style. Though. You guys suck. Well, you it's have that, like they're motivated. You'd be the to be the heel f- to the to the athletes. To be fair, you have emailed or texted coaches in the past about the rankings, and they've talked themselves down. But that's just external talk. Yeah. Internally, you know, they're getting built up. But externally, there's a lot of coaches who want to be ranked lower than they are, not higher. It's the complete opposite of football. I mean, if you look at the, I don't want to give away any. Maybe. Are you reporting if something? You look, yeah, well, I'm going to say this. Yeah, or not. I can say this is public. Uh, if you were looking at the coaches poll, yeah. there's like first place votes. There, I'm not sure if you noticed this, but like during a lot of the regular season the past few years, yeah, uh, NAU wouldn't get every first place vote. Oh, right. They would yeah. get all but one first place vote. Yeah. Like Stanford would get a first place vote randomly, or yeah. a Colorado yeah, yeah. would be different. I think we all knew what Do you know who was giving away oh, the first yeah, place yeah. vote? Yeah, yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow, so Because they don't want it. They were like, yeah, we don't want to. We want to try to so, rank people other higher. When is. So NAU's lost two meets this year. I know. Yeah. When's the last time that happened? Because I remember they had that regular season win streak. I don't know. They. Four years. I, th- I, could, I could see NAU. I mean, they're going to win Big Sky. I could see. No, I could see NAU losing Big Sky. Montana State's good. That would be kind of cool. Mike Smith's like, I've done everything. Now, for my next act, I'm going to lose every, every single meet. Except for the last one. Yeah. He, they could lose Mountain. They could lose to Montana State at Big Sky. If they run a certain squad, Montana State's good. They got a good top three. Southern Utah's And that's something too, that no sport good. could ever claim. What? Lost every single... Every single game and then win the final one. I, mean, I guess a track team could do that lose every single dual meet, lose your conference meet, and then have enough points at nationals. Yeah. In fact, I'm sure there's probably been a couple examples of that. That's the mark of a real sport. I kind of want Mike to purposely sandbag these guys to lose every meet. That would be awesome. Challenge. Lose That's every... what you do when you're trying to win your fifth. Well, they're fifth. They're trying to win five out of yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. Why you not make your fifth one a fun one? Yeah. Fifth is fun. Yeah. Anyway. Any other questions? Um, it's a great podcast. It's even better when you say it's a great podcast. Let's let's not do that though. Let's not go in that direction. I need to figure out this whole thing. I've been having this. The cord. Yeah. Uh, Judson says New Mexico, NC State, Oklahoma are going to Oklahoma State. I'm assuming are going to battle. Kyle, on the topic of uh, purposely talking down to your team, says I'm an assistant coach in cross country, and we have a girl that doesn't like to be cheered by me in a race. I have to be mean. Hard to do. Really. <laughs> Telling your team they suck wouldn't be easy. Is what he's yeah. No, I I think they're talking their own team up internally. But externally, there's this weird element of, what would you say, modesty in the cross-country world? Yeah. Or even the track it's, it's world really in weird. general. Like saying your team's great and you think they're the best in the nation. Like if a college football or college basketball coach said that, like, all right, cool, boilerplate stuff, not a big deal. If someone said that in cross country oh, or in cocky. track, yeah, you're arrogant. Arrogant. Like, how how dare you? Which I don't get it. I think if you believe it, say it. 
if you're saying some, I think it's like that in track too. There's a lot of like yeah. people don't like uh confidence. Confidence yeah. in our sport. Yeah. They and, think it's arrogance and, and they think it's like you need to humble yourself. What have you done? Yeah. I've been in the sport for thirty five years. Yeah. You just are just a twenty year old person making TikToks. Wait, wait, we're talking about coaches. Is this about you now? <laughs> Did you start making TikTok? You're not No, 20. I'm just saying, but like yeah, everyone, you're not allowed to be... The TikTok thing threw me off, I'm not going to lie. I was with you. I was following that I don't know fake what I was doing. conversation until then. I, th- I think it's, it's just where it gets kind of silly is when it's so obvious that they're the best team, yeah. right? It'd be one thing if there's five great teams and the coach gives the interview and says, you know, there's five great teams this year. I don't... Like this year, if you've interviewed any one of those four men's teams coaches and they said, it's a wide open thing between four teams. But even when there's like the huge favorite, they're never going to say it. They're never going to be like, yeah, we're the number one team. We're the, the team to beat. And in fact, I think this year, someone will be worried about saying there's four teams to beat because they'd be worried about pissing off the, the fifth, fifth team, team yeah. or the sixth team. And they'd be real careful about who they left off because coaches consume a lot of the media themselves. They're like, wait a minute. They mentioned Oklahoma State, BYU, Stanford, and NAU. You didn't talk about us? Like, what's the. Yeah, Tulsa's pissed. What's the deal? Well, yeah, why are we. Why are you excluding Wake Forest? Tulsa? What the hell? Colorado? Mark Wetmore, it's definitely going to be in our mentions. Yeah, yeah. What do you? What, he's going to be emailing me on the side. Like, that is an uh, interesting part of the sport. I think part of it too is just it's such a small community, right? And you don't need you're going to run the race anyway and find out who's the fastest. There is a little bit more politicking involved in basketball and football, just because yeah, seating and things like that are important, um, and the, the perception matters. And cross and track, I guess you're just figuring it's all going to come out in the wash at any, at some point anyway, well, inevitably at the end of the season. So it's just, it's, it's just funny to me. Like if you had, if we had a coach on the pod or you email the coach, you'd be like not getting much at this point. Yeah. Right. It's all just kind of circular. No one wants to give like red meat to other coaches. Yeah. Which is funny though, because they're already training hard. It's not like, man, did you hear what, Tulsa said, "I'm using Tulsa. We're doing a lot an extra today. mile. On yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tonight. We're doing eight by one mile instead of seven by one mile. And everybody, we're gonna stop eating Doritos. I know we were doing that before, but we're now we're healthy pissed. now. Yeah, yeah. The, everybody is doing everything they can to win already. You just exuding confidence, which is why I liked for those couple of years. And I, I don't know, is it dead now? BYU NAU on the men's side, the rivalry. Like, is that over? I think it's over. That was fun for a while. It was fun. Because like, Rory Linklater would say stuff. Jordy yeah. Beamish would say stuff. Baxter would say T- stuff. Tyler Day would say stuff. Matt Baxter would say stuff. Um, One last question. Oh, we got, this we got a lot more questions. Okay, well, uh, one last question from me. We have 11 more minutes. We can we can go as long as we want. Right? Colt's doing this virtually saying stretch. Stretch it. Stretch, stretch it. it. No. Um, I'm going to drink some water while you tell me this question. Keep running it, boys. Keep running it. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay, so... You have a race on September 24th. We're still talking cross country? Yeah, we're still talking cross country. Right, we'll take another drink. You have a race on September 24th with basically 80% of the national field. They're, like, all the best teams were there. There was very, especially individuals. Like, I mean, obviously, there's no Alabama. And then on the women's side, there's no NC State, New Mexico, and stuff. But, like, on the men's side, the top four teams are all there. That's who we know is going to be in it when it matters. Yeah. But this race happened September 24th. Is there, like, a little bit of strategy to, like, not run as hard? Like, is there, like, a negative to winning this race? Or, like, trying to win it? Which race? This cross-country race that just happened. No. Because, like, is there, like, a little bit of, like, now you just set the expectation of that if you lost two months later, why were you going so hard in this race, you know? This just gets back to what we were saying before with the modesty and the humility. Right. And a lot of this is based on how you're perceived by others, which is weird. Right. Because what's everybody telling what's the big cliche right now? Trust the process. Like just focus on yourself. Keep keep blinders on. Just grind. That's all you got to do. But then I think part of them are influenced by what other people say, which is why we can't run our full top five, yeah. right? Or why we're going to tempo run this one. Or you hear it all the time. We don't want to show our cards too soon, yeah. right? Because less uh, Isai Rodriguez is out there. You know, like everybody knows he's, like, he's out there. Now, if, you're, if they're hurt, or, you know, banged up, whatever, that's one thing. But if it's you're just holding them out just to hold them out, I think that's – I think you, you go and you try to you – go you sign up for a race, you should try to win the race. Right. Okay. In let's my, just look at like the men's top ten. 
Did Alex Mayer try to win the race? He won. Yes, he did because he won. I mean, maybe. I don't put a heart rate monitor. We'll find out. Do you think Charles Hicks tried to win? No. He got second. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think, yeah. Do you think Victor Chisama, Oklahoma State, who got third, tried to win? Sure. Did think Cole Sprout try to win? Um, what was the margin? Uh, so three seconds. <sighs> I don't know. This is impossible. Do you think, all right, here's the button. Nico Young got fifth. Do you think Nico Young tried to win? No, and that's the problem, is we don't look we look at that like shrug our shoulders and move on. Yeah. When in reality, and I don't think he should have. And again, maybe it's the best for him, but it's also like I feel like Nico Young could handle racing that weekend and then racing again in a couple weeks and then racing, you know, yeah. for the national title. Like I think these these athletes can handle that much racing. I just it's tough to base a sport around 80% of the performances, 80% of the meets, is the best people not trying their hardest. Yeah. It's tough to build a sport around that. Yeah. Because that doesn't even really happen in track. You go to track, sprinters, like, they try to win every race. Hey, we're going to go to the Texas Tech shootout this week and we're going to run the 100, but just like, you know, let's just cruise it. Let's just go like 80%. Yeah. No, they're really going, maybe there's like one out of 100 who's just like a special athlete who's going to shut it down the last stride or two. Like, you see insane in performances. And even in distance uh, in track, right? Like, there is some just, like, cruise and get the qualifier. But how many fast regular season 1500s have we seen? Right? You've seen a lot of those. You've seen yeah. people go for it in steeplechase races. Cross, for whatever reason, just turns into who can try the least. That's, like, That's the, the reward. battle to the bottom. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like watching a semi. To the bottom of the top. It's like being in, watching a semi of the 100 or of the 200 or the first round of the 100 or the 200 at the Olympics of the World Championships. It's who can use the least amount of effort, exert the least amount of energy to win. Yeah. And I think it's tough. What was your, but you're, you're, you're asking, do you think winning has a negative impact now because more pressure gets put on you? Yeah. Do you think Alex Mayer, who just basically beat everyone who's he's going to be competing against to win an individual title, now is like, crap, like I just, beat everyone now yeah. i can't lose any of these people they just only like who else i mean alex mayer has no reason to, i guess adrian will shut no he, he went pro yeah i mean the top returner was charles hicks and he just beat him so well let me answer your now question it's like it's the expectation for alex mayer to win yeah well, and that's kind of crazy because his expectation shouldn't be to win. His expectation should be to be a top 15 runner and score really low points. Yeah, but let's put this in track terms, right? If yeah. if this was an 800 in the beginning of April and someone ran an equivalent performance, you'd say, this is the person to beat. They went against a lot of good names and they got the win. And that person we thought was a favorite, they got fifth. Now, doesn't mean things can't change in the last yeah. six weeks, but like you'd put way more stock into it. But like, what's easier... Like, or what should be the focus of the sport? Should it be athletes like that should learn how to handle the pressure moving forward and that should be part of it? Or should it be, no, 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 let's bring everybody down to the same level and have even fewer people trying. Like, I liked it, Mayer. I didn't, I didn't watch every second of the race. I don't know if he was, like, really hammering it. Like He hammered like, the end. Yeah. But, like, like, no one covered his move. And that's, I think that's how it should be. Like, that's what people want to watch. So is it... Is what, what's a better thing to teach or what's a better thing to focus on now moving forward? Hey, you're one of the guys to beat. Now let's figure out how we can handle that mentally and physically moving forward. Or is it better to be like, hey, dude, that ah, was too much. Yeah. You need to learn to slow down in these regular season meets. And I get it. Like, every, but everything being treated like a prelim when it's not a prelim is, no, is not as much fun to watch. And I get it in a prelim. Right? We all do that, right? We all watch the first round and someone kicks through the line. You're like, whoa, that was that was silly. That's gonna come back and bite them. But that's not this. This is the end of September for a sport that ends in the middle of November. You know what place Alex Mayer finished at the outdoor 10K? Ninth. Second. Wow, I was way off. Just got out leaned by Dylan Jacobs. So beat Abdi Habanir. Yeah. So again. I think the problem with Alex, we like it makes sense that he finished there. I think the thing that just sticks out like a sore thumb for him is he finished 147th in cross line. Yeah, yeah, but that happens. Yeah. Did, but is that's a reason to chill during the regular season? No, oh, yeah. you went hard at the. Did you did you remember he was second? I didn't remember. He was I did second. not. Yeah. I forgot about that. I just looked it up and I'm like, okay, that makes more sense. 
obviously, I, I don't never thought he was going to finish 147th again. I yeah. think he's a top 15 guy. I think I have him top 10. I think I have him like sixth or fifth or seventh. Or yeah. Like that. But the, yeah. I mean, part of that that 10,000 was all eyes were on Nur, and it's just yeah. like when he drifted back, and then like, whoa, Dylan Jacobs is going to yeah. win. All right, one more check in with the chat. C Town fan, do you guys respond to the live chat, or is this really live? Is it live, Gordon? I don't know. Is Did it? we pre plan someone to type that in to make them think we're live? Yeah. This is live. Yeah, it is live. Unless you're listening to it later or archived and then it's, yeah, not, then it's live. not live. Yeah, it either is or it isn't. This is actually a scripted show, guys. Yes, this is a simulation. My name's not Gordon. Yes. Yeah. I'm an actor. This is a simulation. Playing a Gordon. Uh, <laughs> this is a rehearsal, actually. It's a rehearsal. Nathan Fielder's right over there. Yes. Uh, Kyle says, why don't they make meets count for something during the season? That's the Gordon method. Uh, and then Judson has Diamond League style, like points going towards Nationals. Yeah. I, I ultimately, I liked, I endorsed Gordon's plan. It was one of the few plans that Gordon's come up with that I've Thank actually you. endorsed. I thought it was good. It's never, going there's like happen. no chance that it's ever going to happen, which is a bummer. But uh, I do think if you want people, on a very basic level, if you want people to care about your meets, you have to care about your meets. And by you, I'm talking about the people competing. Yeah. You have to care about them. Otherwise, it's like turns in the Pro Bowl. You saw they got rid of the Pro Bowl? Do you see? Uh, There's no game. It's just a skills challenge. Yeah. Do you see my tweet? Yes. No, it, I didn't see your tweet. They should. Uh, well, Gordon's tweet. They're changing the Pro Bowl to Pro Bowl games. Yeah. And I said, hey, NFL, you should just uh, oh. have a track meet. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Just a track meet. Can, how about a track meet? Okay. Do you think that, did they respond? They did not respond. Oh, that's weird. Ro uh, Roger Goodell did not slide into my DMs. 196 so. likes, though, on that tweet. Good yeah, job. Thanks, man. But yeah, wouldn't that be cool if, if just the Pro Bowl was a track? Well, no, they should put, if it's skills, one of the skills should be sprinting. They should at least put a 40. Yeah, one of the skills yeah. could be jumping. One of the skills could be throwing. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? If you had to put together a track meet, what events would you want to see AFC versus NFC? And track. Oh, I would just, I 40, 60, 100, 4 by 1. No, I don't care about 4 by 1. I don't want to. You want to see a 4 by 1? No, I would want to see a relay. Like handoffs? No, I don't care. No. It's, they're not practicing. Actually, they'll probably get it to stick around without practicing. I'd go all the way up to 400. 400? I'd, I'd want to see. Cause what about heard, like seeing someone run like a mile? Eh, not that interesting. Like kickers running a mile. If I want to see someone run. Uh, there. What's his name? Is really fast. Gano. I think Graham Gano is fast. But most, if. What about uh, like a 10K? I want to see someone run 40 minutes. I just feel myself. Okay, what about like the field events? Throws, maybe. Like a uh, javelin? I want to see quarterbacks throw a javelin. Yeah, maybe let's go jab and shot. Okay. But I don't, long jump is just. What about high jump? Let's just put all those guys. See, like. No, it's not basketball. But seeing like wide receivers do a high jump would be kind of cool. You see Devontae Smith, that one jump he had? He got pretty high. They're not jumping I think near it's work. It's just the combine, guys. Yeah, just basically watch the combine. No, the com the combine doesn't have a four hundred. Gatlin once because Gatlin tried out for the NFL when he was suspended, and he said he actually thought four hundred runners would be better as wide receivers than hundred runners because of the endurance it was required. Because it's yeah. like you do this route, and then especially you now with how up tempo the offenses yeah. are. Yeah. So I, I would want to, and I remember when Adrian Peterson was talking about trying out for the Olympics. I don't know if you remember that story. Yeah. That was a while ago. I think he mentioned it would be in the quarter. A lot of those guys have run good. Good 400, so I would do the 400. The combine is just the 40. And shuttle run, I don't need a shuttle run. I'm not going to bench press. I'm not going to do that stuff. The jab is interesting, though. The technique is so difficult to figure out. Okay, if we're not going to get a track meet, what they should do is they should invite like five or ten track athletes to the Pro Bowl games to compete in their skill challenges. Or... Devin Allen. Just one Devin Allen. Just one Devin Allen? <laughs> Not five track Devin five Allen, track. he's still on the Eagles practice squad. He's already there, right? Yeah, he's on the practice squad. I've been refreshing, making sure he's still <laughs> active. Right My Eagles, man, 3-0. What if Devin Allen does win the Super Bowl? Then he was right. And he right. gets like the game-winning like, kickoff return. He, then he was right. What do you think would be a better feeling for Devin Allen? Winning the Super Bowl or winning worlds that he false started in? Winning the Super Bowl as a practice player or winning the Super Bowl where he gets the game-winning touchdown? Winning the Super Bowl oh. as, like, a practice player. Oh. But he's no. suited up. No. The he's, got the, he's got the war paint on. He's, well, not, no, he's got then the, it's track. It's track. Yeah. 
Yeah, Super Bowl's cool. Uh, Beef West, what even is Shuttle Run? You know, they run, and they, they touch the line, and then you go back and touch the lines, back and forth and back and forth. Seatown fan, who wants to know if this is live, um, asks, what do you think of Kipchoge's world record? I think he just wants to make tests that were not taped. It's not a simulation. He's just throwing out questions. <laughs> there, there's your answer. What's the two and a half hour podcast? Yeah. That's our take. I'm out of Kipchoge takes. Uh, Tamp Eagle says RGT was an elite foreign hurdler. Yeah, you can throw the hurdles in there too. Ted Ginn, really good high hurdler. But just that's... Is Ted Ginn even still in the, the league? No, I'm saying, I'm just saying there's a history of, of this happening. That guy's 37 years old. So is Kipchoge. That's, I'm going to say that from now on <laughs> to everything. So is Kipchoge. And every year he gets older. I'm just going to use the same 40 thing. time was 428. Yeah. All right. All right, we're leaving it there. Uh, come back Wednesday. Gordon won't be here. No, nope. just Friday. Friday. Sorry. Okay. I won't be here. Yeah, Gordon won't be here. I'll be here on Friday. So let's, let's give him a preview, Cole. Let's go ahead. Just one shot. Just me straight into this camera. Oh, that camera right there. I saw it move. Just 40 minutes. You look really short. I do? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, there uh, you go. 40 minutes straight to this camera. Oh, you moved. No, not that guy. <laughs> Cole having fun with this. This is all remote controlled, guys. Technology is insane. Um, we'll preview the London uh field for the women and then maybe i'll just do like q a yeah do we have emails i have uh, we emails. did we did get an email one about your dunk okay is it positive or this negative? Is from andrew it's negative i don't want to hear gordon it. kevin i saw this in my inbox this morning immediately thought of gordon the highlight quote the results of the study were pretty straightforward squatting with bands improved vertical jumping performance more than squatting with straight weight the difference was statistically significant for squat jump improvements, and then there's a bunch of math, but not quite statistically significant for counter movement jump improvements. A whole bunch of other math. Here's the full write up, and he passed along a link. So I need to do stronger by science. Go check our inbox. He sends. I'll the check link. the inbox. I need to do like squats with rubber bands. Bands, bands resistance bands. I guess over weight. Squats with resistance. I bands squat with weight, which is you know where why I am. Um... Oh, we got. Oh man, we got another one here. This is a great take. Subject line: Kipchoge fears a tough course. I might save that one for. Let's save that one for Friday. Take. That is hot. That's, That's why he's not going to Boston or New York. Uh, stay. How tall are you? I'm six foot. Gordon's six two. Three. Mm. Bro. Uh oh! Don't stand up. It's gonna look weird. I am. You can't move very tall, well. man. Look at that. That's tall. That's people can't. See, you can't even see my head. Look, you can't even see. You can't even see how t I'm so tall. You can't even see. All right. Let's end the pod. This is the first of many in the studio. Ended really well. Thanks to this Gooder good. for sponsoring us. Yes, Gooder. Thank you. Put the glasses back G -O -O -D -R, on. G-O-O-D-R. Run Gooder. Uh, G-O-O-D-R.com. We will talk to you guys on, or I will talk to you guys on Friday. Thanks to Colt for producing. Thanks, everybody, for watching live. We'll see you next time.